Welcome back to the Abundant Harvest Homestead. I am Papa Pepper. I'm fresh out the lake. Uh, you know what? It's interesting because in this series, this is going to be the third video. I'm going to make a playlist. But just clean fish with me. The first one was a bunch of pan fish that we caught on rod and reel. The second one was a bunch of carp we bow fished. And now I've got some gar that we spear fished. These are not the biggest, but there's a lot of good meat in here. And I do have one really big one, which I'll hold up real nice for you guys in a bit. Um, we've been eating these for a bit now, and they are my top target species. They are the ones I like more than all. And I am really impressed with the versatility of the meat, how versatile it is, and then um, just, you can catch these a lot of different ways. There's people who snag them. There's people who catch them on a unbraided, braided nylon. Uh, we've caught them on the rod and reel. We've bow fished them. And as of today, brand new, we spear fish them. Real quickly to show you how I do it, I use these Weiss scissors, which are pretty awesome. And I just go from where the gill goes, right where the gill is, straight across the back of the head. And then I snip all the way up, like right above the backbone. If you look closely at these guys, there's uh, scales that are clearly on the left side of the fish scales that are clearly on the right side of the fish, and then there's a peculiar row up the middle, which is the scales that are the center line. So I'm just snipping up that, and it's a process. Um, some people use tin snips, some people use sawzalls or grinders. Um, I like this. And sometimes you can get quite a few in one, but a lot of times you just gotta let her snip. Little bit by little bit. Here we go, that's a better one. Oh, but I have kind of dreamed of spear fishing forever. I've got a good friend who, um, his wife and children bought him a spear gun for his birthday the other year. And uh, they're kind of good researchers. So they did a lot of different research and decided that the Cressy Sub SL Star 55 would be a good one for him. And uh, I said, well, if that's what you're getting, and I plan on going with you, why well, don't I get the same thing? Um, if your family researched it pretty well, that uh, I can trust that. And let's give it a go. Now that I got the whole back open, there's gonna be each side of the backbone in here. I'm gonna go down and then I'm gonna peel it away on the inside of here. So I'm going in straight on each side of the backbone all the way down to the ribs and then across the inner shell of this to peel the meat off of that. It's amazing what some people will say about gar. They'll claim it's too bony of a fish. And to me, that just means I don't think they've really ever opened one up. Yeah, they've got good scales on the back. That's kind of a little beast to get through. But you saw how much effort I put into that. I'm already open. I'm done with my scissors now. I'm through the scales. And I'm just following it right along that backbone down to the ribs. And what I find is that there is two amazing boneless back straps is what I call them because if you've ever harvested deer for venison, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just big boneless back straps. So people can say they're too bony, but as far as I'm concerned, if you're going all the way to the rib cage, the only thing on the other side of that is guts. And I don't know, you may not exactly know what you're doing or how to aim for what you're trying to hit. Um, picked up that spear gun last year though and got a chance to use it uh, twice I think. Did a little bit with a Hawaiian sling too but me and my buddy went down Crooked Creek. We uh, got some suckers in a little hole there in November and then a bit before that we went out to a different creek, uh, War Eagle Creek and we were hoping to go for some gar but the gar seemed to be out of it for the year. We didn't see any while we were there, but we saw some suckers. So we harvested those and smaller targets. And even today, I'll have a full video up on our fishing channel, which is our main backup channel because at any moment something could happen to this and we could lose this channel. Uh, just the way the world is when you're a guest in somebody else's house. So it was a lot of fun. I'm glad I got footage of it and I hope whoever goes over and checks it out is blessed and enjoys it. But the goal that we had when we got the suckers the first time 
was to try to find some gar. They'd pretty much cleared out of there for the year. And instead we got some suckers. I was hoping to do a boil. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with crab boils or crawfish boils. We used to enjoy that type of stuff, but since we changed up our diet and eat that with fins and scales, um, which comes from the water, we don't eat crustaceans, mollusks, other things anymore. So we were hoping to catch some gar and do a gar boil. That didn't work because we only got suckers and they are kind of a flaky white meat with a lot of bone in it. So they fell apart um, in the boil. This stuff lends itself well because it's got kind of a, I say like a rubbery consistency. And I plan on maybe doing some of this in the boil and some of this when you deep fry it, it's like a chicken tender. It's amazing. It's got a kind of chewy consistency like a chicken tender, and uh, we love it. This is actually my top target species right now for hitting, and these are my first gar of the year. When I showed up, I was checking if some gizzard shad were still down by a, uh, by a bridge because there was a bunch of them there the other day. And I thought, well, that's fins and scales. Somehow that's gonna be a food. But if you kind of research them, most people say they're not very good table fare. And there's got to be a way to do it. And as I was kind of thinking about it, I mentioned something to my son. He goes, I wonder what would happen if we smoked them. And I'm like, man, that's exactly what I was thinking. That I bet you there's a way to just smoke them and get them done. I talked a little bit about a smokehouse in one of my recent Clean With Me videos. But, look at that. That is boneless backstrap. That's one of them there. Here comes the other one, and it may seem like quite a while to get half of a fish done right there, but that's the equivalent of, of several panfish, you know, the amount of meat that's there. So in the same time, I could have done several fish and gotten the same amount of meat. So I, I don't mind it. This stuff is our favorite right now. Maybe Mama likes drum best. I did see a freshwater drum today. But I didn't get a shot off on it. That's another rough fish that is legal for me to shoot. And I'm pretty excited about that. I'm also gonna look into if you can spearfish white bass um, in that lake. It varies by lake. And I definitely saw some nice ones today. And I might try to fish them out soon, but I didn't shoot because I'm not sure. And of course I was underwater, so I didn't have my phone on me. Well, this was my first time spear fishing this year, I guess, with my Cressy sub. This is my third time ever, if my memory serves me right. All I shot previously was suckers. And I hope to shoot some carp, too. We were planning a, a Crooked Creek carp shoot spear fishing trip coming up maybe at some time this year. That's our goal. We'll see if it happens. Uh, we saw some nice ones there, but we were in kayaks and it was difficult to bow fish them. We shot some, but it was difficult. And we figure if we were in the water, Oh man, we'd be on a whole nother level, like the underwater level. And it would be, uh, it'd be pretty cool. And some of my recent nights out, I've gotten pretty good at stunning some of the carp. So I kind of know where I'm looking for a placement to just knock them out cold when I spearfish them and not have them uh, put up a giant fight because, I don't know, if they pull my spear gun out of my hand, I might have a serious issue if they take off into the lake or down the creek. Um, cool thing with these, this one here, where was it? I hit right here. Okay, so in the overall length of the fish, I shot it right here. The next one, I blasted through right here. This guy, I, uh, I hit right back here, all the way through. Actually, this was the first one and I went straight through it. So there's a hole on each side of it. And it pretty much, the fish was done fighting. That blasted through, it gave up. This one I was coming from behind. So I actually had an entry point here. I came up behind it, hit it here, and it came out up here. Quite an interesting looking shot. And then this big one here, remember I said I'd show it later? <laughs> I blasted right through here and it pretty much
quit fighting at that time. Look at these guys. What crazy creatures. Just interesting. A lot of meat on that big guy. I can't wait to get him out here in a minute. Oh, uh, but yeah, if you get a bigger fish, sometimes they're gonna put up a big fight. I don't know. Do I really wanna lash my spear gun to my hand? If I do and it really puts up a fight, I don't wanna drown, I'm just snorkeling out there. But uh, I also don't wanna, you know, lose a spear gun I spent some money on, so. We'll see how it goes, thankfully. These didn't really do much for me. They didn't really cause much of an issue. And uh, that made it easy. There's the other one. So that's the empty fish. This fish is empty now, although it still looks full. But all the meat's gone. I consider that two thirds, this third and that third. And then all that's left is the bottom third, which is ribs and guts. Not a lot of interest in that for me. So it took a bit. I've been talking and recording for about 11 minutes almost. Let me get my hands. And if all I was doing was concentrating on what I'm up to here, I might be even quicker. But I'm thinking of words, I'm talking to y'all. So this gets me so excited. One, it allows me to learn the lake on a whole different level and be underwater and observe a whole bunch of stuff. It's, it's absolutely amazing. I had a fantastic time and I'm still processing a lot of the information that I was exposed to today when I was snorkeling. I only probably went out for less than two hours of actual snorkel time um, and it was about maybe an hour that I was in in the area where I shot these guys. Um, wow, I'm still just, like I said, <laughs> it's a learning process and my brain is just getting bigger right now because of everything I was exposed to. It's also going to help me understand more of my fishing fishing because I'm looking underwater at all this stuff going down and then when I'm above water I kept kind of peeking up my head and looking around like oh, where is this? Oh okay that's what's going on here and we don't have boats so all of our boat fishing we do from shore wading all of our fishing we do from shore wading or we pick up some kayaks recently so now I can know when I take the kids out with the kayaks where I can probably catch some really nice fish. It was absolutely amazing to see even just how many hundreds um, there are on the Papa Pepper Family Fishing Channel when I put out that video. Uh, I think if everything recorded right, you know, I didn't check the footage, I just got home and started cleaning fish. It should be absolutely amazing. Um, and just kind of a, a special National Geographic type underwater, you know, adventure. And then some fish getting shot and eaten as well. So, pretty cool. But for me, I've known for a long time, a lot of years, that fishing is a great way to provide for your family. Um, you don't need your own lake, you know, on your own property to enjoy fishing. There's so much public water that is available for people to fish. And whether you live in the country, whether you live in the city, you know, you're gonna have an opportunity to at least take a drive and go fishing. I think as far as I know, all 50 states are gonna require fishing licenses. If you're fishing in the state you live in, it's gonna be a citizen, you know, a resident, that's what it is, a resident fishing license. If you're traveling to a different state to do your fishing, that's gonna be a non-resident one. And those are usually uh, cost more, kind of part of the, the tourism type stuff. You're from out of, out of state, so we're gonna charge you more, but we'll still let you do it. And then sometimes there's like a yearly pass or a day pass you can pick up. A lot of times if I was heading down to South Texas, um, when I was doing it, it was 16 bucks a day, or it was 64 bucks for the year. So if I thought I was gonna be fishing at least four different days, or maybe coming back again that year and doing some more fishing, I would normally spend the 64 bucks and just get a year pass. If I knew, you know, I'm heading out to South Padre today, this is my only chance that I'm actually hitting any fishing, then I'd just pick up the day pass for like 16 bucks. So I'll probably have to pick up a Missouri one this year. I plan on maybe doing some stuff up there and uh, possibly maybe like a day pass out in Kansas or something. We'll see. Next strip of meat. 
And those are not bad. I think those ones are gonna be for the boils. And this big one over here, I think I'll do for the uh, gar bites. Here is the gar boil. Here is the gar bites. Today is a happy day for my people. That's that big one. These are those little two, and this stuff holds together really well, even being boiled. We added some taters, sausages, and onion, like this, boom. And then that's just the uh, Zatarain's breading. We fried it in oil. This is just the Zatarain's like crab boil mix. Big meal for my family. Three fish, little spear fishing. Happy day for my people. So I'm gonna probably soak that one in lemon juice for a little bit and then bread them with some Zatarans and then cook them in some oil and have a uh, some gar bites so they'll be like a chicken tender type deal and then with these guys these two smaller ones I'll probably chop them up in little pieces get some of my Zatarans crawfish or crab boil mix now there's no you know you got to add your own crabs so there's no crabs or crawfish or shrimp in there we'll just take that seasoning and we'll season these guys like it and uh, shrimp was probably one of my favorite foods before. I definitely don't uh, miss it to the point that like I desperately need a substitute because we changed our diet. But um, this is rather similar and I bet you I could make a really good shrimp substitute out of gar if I, if I desired to. I am so looking forward to this. We're really just gonna have a feast tonight and mama's gonna be happy because she loves this stuff, and when it comes to cooking this, normally I'm the one who's gonna be cooking it up too, so she gets a tasty meal with no kitchen time. We share the responsibility here, and there's, you know, we got seven children right now, but our oldest is 12. Our children know how to cook a lot of stuff. Um, if I told my boy, all right, here's the gar make gar bites, he'd just do it, and he's nine now. And my 10-year-old and 12-year-old daughters, you know, they'll, they'll make a lot of meals if they desire a dessert. They can say, hey, can we have this for dessert? And then they'll make it, you know. They know there's a better chance of getting dessert if they go through all the effort. So that's a good incentive for them to learn skills and apply that knowledge they're learning. And they enjoy it too. I like hobbies where the end result is something tangible that's beneficial. Now some hobbies you can monetize and that's really cool. I mean, going out and taking some photos and having some photos, um, really awesome really cool but if you can monetize that how much cooler is that to have a a compensation for your time and effort look at this guy yeah that's a fish okay we're at 17 minutes right now so i guess we're eight and a half minutes on average per fish if you say the whole time i was cleaning fish um but a tangible end result that's that's beneficial to the hobbies you have is what I really like. Here, I got to go spear fishing. Now snorkeling is cool. It's neat to be out there in the water, see all sorts of different stuff and, uh, and enjoy it. But uh, if the end result of my snorkeling trip is we got dinner, that's awesome. If I would've hit all the fish I shot at, we'd have multiple dinners. And even this one's gonna be, it's gonna be feast level with the amount of meat that's coming into this. So that's gonna be a benefit and a blessing for us. Crazy thing happened yesterday. We went out to a, uh, it was actually the Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company Spring Planting Festival. And we're not gardening or planting this year. <laughs> and we weren't vendors there and we weren't speaking there. So we just went there. Uh, mostly just to kind of hang out with people, kind of work the crowd, if you will, you know, work on relationships, hang out with people. I probably knew if we counted up by individuals, there was probably a couple hundred people that we personally knew there and many others that we met. And then there was quite a few that kind of knew us too, so sometimes every couple steps, <laughs> or sometimes before you made your next step, somebody else would come up and say hi. And you know, some people, if they want to talk more, that's what we try to do. Other people are like, hey, pop a pepper. I'm like, oh, hey, and they're like, dude, I appreciate your stuff, thanks, man. And then they walk off. That's all they want, you know, just to, have that personal, hey, we saw them, we uh, thanked them, and you know, that was that, that's awesome. You know, some people don't really wanna take up your time and your family's time if they see you out having a good time or something, but again, that was kind of part of our, our goal there. But while we were there, 
we ran into somebody we had seen last fall. I went to somewhere where a bunch of people were and they never, um, the vast majority of them have never eaten gar. You know, that's just kind of the way it is for people. <laughs> so many people think this is trash fish. So what I did is I had, oh, I think it was four. I actually had some pretty nice hauls of some gar and I soaked them in some lemon juice. It's just the way we like to season them. And then we uh, coated them in Zatarain's, uh, the breading mix, and then we froze them. We froze them individually, probably on a wax paper on a cookie sheet. And then once they froze, we put them together in gallon freezer bags. And we could just pack all the meat into that gallon freezer bag, but then it's a block. So by freezing them individually, and then already uh, battered or breaded, um, it allowed me just to dump them straight out of there into a deep fryer. So at this uh, gathering we were at, I brought four bags of, of gar bites, and I deep fried them and just handed them out to anyone who wanted. And these are generally a bunch of people who would have a similar diet to that which we do. So they're following things like, you know, if it comes from the waters, it's gonna be fins and scales. So I took a dried one, and you know, this looks like a whole fish. I'll often remove the backbone and the guts and the uh, rib cage, and then it's empty. And if you uh, hang it up somewhere, it dries. If you look on the beach sometimes, you'll see these laying there for months because their scales are super tough and you know, they're a rather solid fish. So even after scavenger birds or other things kind of clean them out, the exoskeleton of these animals still exists. And I brought one like that up just to show people so they could lay their own eyes at and see, oh, well these are fins and scales. Like this is exactly, you know, what scripture is talking about in Leviticus 17, about eating things from the waters that have fins and scales. And I have one there as an example. You know, I'm a hands-on learner. I like to see it, to believe it sometimes. And it was kind of cool. But then one person was like, hey, can I buy that from you? And I'm like, well, that's interesting. Like I'm trying to figure out some ways to uh, not just get a, a meal for my family out of this, but you know, if I share some videos or pictures online, I can monetize my fishing experience that way. If I can kind of do some poor man's taxidermy with these gar almost exoskeletons, well, you know, that could be worth a couple bucks. And uh, I knew I recognized the person as I came walking by and they're like, oh, Papa Pepper, like, uh, I owe you 30 bucks. And I'm like, you owe me 30 bucks? They're like, yeah, I, uh, you gave me that gar. And uh, I never gave you anything for it. And I'm like, well, 30 bucks is quite a bit. I'm like, if you're willing to give me, you know, 30, I'd gladly take 20. Look at that. That's, that's good right there. That could fill me. Um, and uh, her husband reached in the wallet and pulls out a 20 and I said, hey, that's cool. You know, that's, thanks, you know. And then he pulls out a five and hands me that. And I'm like, man, that's more than enough. And he goes, that's okay. And he pulls out another five. And they gave me actually 30 bucks for, um, for one of these, one of these that I just dried essentially and uh, clear coated and a couple other things. I'm working on some preservation methods with them, but how cool is that to have an awesome adventure? Like in that case, it would have been catching them rod and reel. So I'm catching these crazy fish on the rod and reel. They're fighting like, like awesome. We're enjoying it, having a blast. We get home, we feed the family and then we take what we don't eat and turn it into something that somebody's willing to purchase. Now, of course, not everyone's gonna want one of those. I like them. I'll tell you that right now, I like them. But some people out there may think that's cool. And if they're willing to, you know, help support our family, our lifestyle, our creativity, our, our just interaction and provision for our family um, in order to get their hands on something like that, like, I thought that was awesome. So it's just kind of further, you wouldn't think about that. How many of you guys have ever cleaned a fish? Okay, right now, clean fish with me. How many of you guys have ever cleaned a fish and sold what you didn't eat? It's probably happened. I'm not saying it hasn't, but I'm saying I would almost, you know, I would highly doubt that anyone watching this video right now, especially like the first 500 to 1,000 in the first day or so, uh, have ever done anything like that, but it's possible. Like that's, that's insane, but it's cool and I understand it. And I'll tell you what, there's definitely times in my life where to get my hands on a gar exoskeleton like that, ready to hang on the wall of some outbuilding, yeah, I'd have paid 20 bucks. 
probably a couple times I would have been even willing to pay 30 so I can't say I don't understand where they're coming from but how cool is that to just to kind of be able to look at the fish you're eating like at that moment and then in their case be able to take it home and use it for some sort of decor somewhere you know it's rather rustic and raw meaning that it's it's a carcass of a fish but it has a nice presentation um, after that I was dabbling around a little more with monster truck I'll show you on the wall before we shut down this video it's the background for the thumbnail the title you know thumbnail but uh there's a bunch on the wall here hanging on the side of my woodshed that I was trying some different stuff with and I probably got room for improvement so I'll continue to work on improving but we kind of were filling them with great stuff and clear coating them and trying to find some ways just to make them hold up for a while look cool keep their form and uh, and be awesome so boom another one again the fish looks full the fish looks full that's that's insane um, that's super cool. I'll actually cut the uh, the middles out of these later and I'll hang them up and let them dry and I'll start my next year's worth of experimentation on poor man's taxidermy. But for a short trip to the lake to get a couple of these, get some crazy food for the family, absolutely love it. Here's a quick look at this and then we're doing both gar bites and gar boil tonight. I'm gonna get in and get this done. Let me just show you those fish quick before I finish. These have been hanging out here for a year, kind of exposed to the elements. You can see some of them got quite a bit of great stuff coming out of them. Um, but we'll see. And I think one of these, maybe that one, would have been Monster Truck's biggest one ever. I think this one here, one or the other. One was his, one was mine, or one was mine, one was his. But that was pretty cool. One day we caught five uh, just fishing from the bridge for a little bit. Red Pepper here came with me on this trip. She was my banner bearer. She had uh, some kayaks by me and had the big old diver down flag flying off the back of it. So uh, anyone who came by in a boat wouldn't accidentally run me over. But there's last year's. Here's the start to this year's. Three on the board. Let's eat. Hey, how excited are you for gar bites? Uh, really excited. How excited are you for gar boil? You don't know? We're about to find out. She liked it before, but it is a little spicy. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Um, have you ever cleaned a gar? Would you ever clean a gar? Do you think they're trash fish? Do you still think they're trash fish? Or do you give me the benefit of the doubt and say, you know what? That might not be so bad after all. Because I'll tell you what, it's not so bad. That's my personal testimony. We'll see you next time. Pop out. That's good, you know.